Darren Venter from Strat Prop Buyers Agency in Sydney. Welcome to the show, mate. Great to see you. Thanks, Trent. Good to see you again too, mate. Keeping well? I am. Hey, let's talk investment properties. Um, you yeah. obviously are, are a buyer's agent. You buy investment properties for your clients. But how do you choose that one investment property to buy out of uh, thousands that are available in the marketplace? Yeah, mate, it's, it's a very good question. Thousands is correct. I mean, actually, there's around three and a half thousand suburbs that we monitor at any given go. But um, so the way that we would typically find that property for our clients is we actually have to profile our clients out. And we do this in terms of a questionnaire format and it's called an FPS profile. So it's understanding what their finances, provisions and structures are. And we, if we understand what they're able to provide in terms of the finances and provisions and time availability towards the actual property uplift or property growth, then we're able to put them into a marketplace. And we do this by means of segmenting the market throughout the whole of Australia. So we are nationwide buyers agencies and um, we actually segment the whole market and find exactly what's going to work for our clients based on what they can provide. Gotcha. And I guess finding, I guess segmenting that can be really difficult, but uh, data is such a big thing for you guys and access to data information is key. So how do you use data or, or information in, in your business to, to find those, those marketplaces? Yeah, that's, it is. It's a, it's a huge thing for us. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of ways that you can use data and um, there's a lot of confusing ways to use data, but we like to keep it quite simple and we like to base our whole concept of creating a, a scenario or situation of a prediction of a, of, a, of a property, literally on the whole, the old terms of, you know, being in the right place at the right time. And if you actually say, take a look at timing and placements, it's, it's a really, it's a very good tool to use because there's quite a few structures and strategies you can use in timing and placements. So if you look at placements, you're looking at the area that you're looking in, but also the areas around it, which can influence that area. Then if you're looking at the timing for it, you're actually looking for that, that information in that area and around right now, yesterday or historically, and then also in the future. So understanding what sort of infrastructure is going into an area, understanding that sort of market movements and the demographic movement of population shifting into and out of an area, understanding all of that in the here and there versus the yesterday, today and tomorrow format allows you to create a really robust plan of conceptualizing what is going to be able to work for our clients and proposing a, a good uh, plan forward in their actual investment property. Um, and then we obviously take that back to their, uh, their FPS profile, match that up with what they can provide and uh, we create a plan for them. And it's a, it's a really robust way of doing things and uh, we really enjoy it and it, it works very well for our clients. And obviously like a financial breakdown, once you find that property, that, that's awesome. But uh, the financial breakdown is also critical. Do you think that, uh, I guess, your, your mum and dad investors may miss a couple of data points when we're looking at the, I guess, the financial return on investment on, on a property? I've actually been on your site a number of times before and you have this really cool calculator on there. So yeah, are there some things that I guess your, your typical investors would miss when they go to look at uh, a financial breakdown on their property? Yeah, um, 100%. I mean, we always talk about yields a lot because we want to understand what the property is going to cash flow, you know, what the projection on cash flow is going to be at least. But what a lot of people don't take into account is obviously the gross and net yields. And gross yields are fair enough, but net yields are the actual real returners. And we have to understand what t is taken into account when we're calculating those things out. So, you know, there's the management fees of the property itself, there's the taxes, insurances, the actual loan applications services for cleaning, uh, vacancy time on the market when we're renting it out to different clients and the period when the property is actually vacant. Um, you know, a lot of these things, as well as the loan structure, how are you going to be structuring the loan? So once we understand all of these different uh, bits of information, we can actually plug it into our calculator on the website and allows us allows our clients to actually put their, their actual um, property information in terms of the price that they want to pay for a property as well as the projected growth for that property, which they can find out on the calculator. There's a little guide which shows us how to actually be able to predict a growth towards a very rough estimate, but it allows us to actually, uh, you know, create this a 10 year plan or a 10 year forecast of what that property will project. However, I just need to disclose 10 years is a very long time for an investment property. We don't like to use it as a rule of thumb that that's going to be the actual end all case and the end all calculation. But you can typically probably work it out quite accurately to two, three, two or three years predictions. 
And uh, that calculator sheet that actually gets sent through to you gives you a breakdown in terms of your, your return on investments and your property growth as well as your, your, uh, your cash flow situation on that property. And I guess without giving away the, uh, the secret sauce in terms of the exact suburbs that you uh, like investing in at the moment, uh, obviously there's huge sea change and, and tree change kind of happening. Uh, obviously regional areas are starting to see really good kind of population growth. There's some areas, like I guess broad areas that you like investing in at the moment because they, they do hit a lot of those, uh, uh, I guess, in, in your investment uh, criteria. Yeah, there, there are a lot of areas that we are looking at at the moment and we actually are being quite active in at the moment. So they are the regional areas, which you're, you're, you're right. And, you know, there's, there's pockets of the Sunshine Coast, which have got some really good options available at the moment. Uh, regional Victoria has got some really good options too. But we're also seeing a bunch of movements around other areas like South Australia, uh, close to Adelaide. There's some really good uh, movement going on there. But it's also, and when I say movement, it's also very pocketed movement so it's regional movement and the reason why this is happening is because we're seeing a very big shift in population at the moment um, I mean you know we touched on earlier that it all is all about population movement and how population comes into and goes out of an area and with COVID going on at the moment and people losing their jobs and people looking for different lifestyles where they can get into pockets and actually enjoy their lifestyles for a very valuable um, you know, return on an investment where they're actually not having to fork out heaps of money to be able to live close to the city. They're able to separate themselves a bit more. So it's for a couple of reasons, namely those two, which are creating this very interesting population movement at the moment into these regional areas of Queensland's got a lot of it going on at the moment. Um, but also there's a lot of uh, movements going into these other areas because of government uh, help and there's you know there's incentive programs like the fast track 20 where the government's putting in multiple billions of dollars of uh, infrastructure expenditure into areas and there's a lot of this sort of stuff going on so finding those little pockets of 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 uh, these areas where people are moving into which is backed by the infrastructure expenditure by the government is these are pretty much the places where we're looking at the moment without giving too much away of course <laughs> sure uh, and just yeah. you built something really cool with uh with with within your business called the client portal app if i'm if i'm not mistaken so if i'm a, a, a client or i sign on with you and you, you help me obviously find a a property how does the client portal app i guess kind of help me how does that kind of the flow is it just kind of keeping me updated with the whole process and where we are uh from i guess kind of start to finish yeah, so the way, uh, so we, you're right, we have an app uh, and we basically um, put all of our clients who we take on into the app and we give them a login and they're able to see the 19 steps of acquisition and uh, they're able to log on at any given time and this proves quite valuable for our, a lot of our clients because a lot of our clients do work shift hours where they're you know, in hospitals or doctors and they, they, they do work odd times or they're in the mines. Uh, we've also actually got a couple of investors at the moment a couple in New York, Singapore, and then another couple that we've just taken on that are uh, just moving over to Abu Dhabi. And these guys obviously are very different time zones. So they're able to log into the app and have a look at where we are. And we update those steps as you go along, mostly most days. And uh, we're able to upload any sort of uh, supporting documentation. We write a little blurb about what we're doing on the day. And then we've also got a live chat inside the actual app um, so that basically if, if there is an, anything that we need to chat about, we can leave a message there for them. They can log back on when they get the notification, uh, when it suits them and uh, have a look and leave a message for us and get back to them. That doesn't discard any other communication. It's just another form of communication, but uh, it's something that helps our clients get uh, more information that, 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 that basically not having to bother us and we're not having to bother them in the wrong time so it's just a, a bit more of a transparent approach to the actual, at the actual acquisition of the property and contact details if i'm a buyer i'm interested in your services i want to chat a little bit more um how do i get in contact with you uh you can get us on the website as www.strapprop.com.au or you can get me on my mobile 0404-290-149 or darren at strapprop.com.au Darren, thanks so much for joining us series of Soho. Great to see you again. Thanks, Trent. Always a pleasure, mate. Thanks for watching. If you want to check out more, visit SohoApp.com or if you're looking at adding your properties into Soho and connecting your CRM, check out the links in the description below.